Hey, what's up, Fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily, and today we're doing another quick podcast episode. So I don't really have any complete finished objects to share with you in this episode, but I do have some fun works in progress and I did want to go ahead and share with you the final numbers on my yarn stash tracking for January. So we're going to just get straight into it. What I am wearing today is an Oslo Hat Mohair Edition by Petite Knit. I knit this in one ball of Knit Picks palette in the colorway Iris Heather, along with the Knitting Lofts in-house mohair, uh, which is called Dust, and that's in the colorway Squashed Plums. I'm wearing this because I feel like it's too small, or I felt like it was too small. I blocked it, and I still am thinking I feel like it's too small. I can feel it's kind of like squeezing my head a bit, but it'll do for this video. Um, I do want to say this yarn, I'm not sure if it was the mohair or if it was the Knit Picks palette, although I think it was the mohair, this leached a lot of dye when I bathed it. Another thing that actually ended up leaching a lot of dye when I blocked it was this, which I already shared with you as a finished object in my last podcast episode. Um, it's a Sophie shawl, which I knit in Sandisgarn Alpaca in the colorway Petroleum, as pattern prescribes. Um, this leached so much dye into the blocking water, I was honestly quite shocked. I've never used a yarn that let out so much dye upon blocking, so I don't know if that's just this color or if that's a property of the alpaca fiber and how it interacts with dyes. Um, but both of these are blocked. Both of these let a lot of dye out. And I thought that would be a little, little detail y'all might be interested in knowing, especially the Santa's Garn alpaca. I was frankly really surprised by that. But anyhow, um, I like this hat. It's a fine knit. I've knit two of these now in different sizes and both of them I found a little too small. So I think I prefer the ribbed hats I have. I'm just going to keep wearing the ribbed hats I have and maybe knit more ribbed hats and hopefully my sister will get a little more use out of this one. But like I said, it'll do for tonight. So the first thing I've been working on that I'll share with you is a half finished object. It is a DK weight vanilla sock that I'm working on for one of my friends. And this was a lot of fun to knit. So the yarns that I've used are um, some yarn, some friends, kid silk mohair that was gifted to me by Hobby in the fall. And this is in the colorway light gray. This is a really nice mohair for socks, I think, because it's got a little bit of wool content in it as well. And so I find that it just does a really good job of making the socks feel substantial, if that makes sense. And then the wool that I'm using, the sock yarn that I'm using, was also gifted to me um, by Tyler of Arcane Fiber Works, who is a dyer from Alberta, Canada. And this is a 8020 merino nylon four ply sock yarn in these gorgeous purple colors. This is Beauty on the Beach. And this is like the most dreamy, princessy purple. I am like in love with it. I think it came out so beautifully. I typically don't tend to use, that's redundant, I don't tend to use lighter mohairs uh, with darker wools. I prefer darker mohairs with lighter wools so that the mohair kind of like 
comes forward, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, but this, I feel like, has resulted in a very beautifully blended fabric. I think that the silveriness of the mohair sort of subdues the more punchy purples that are in the sock yarn. And I, I, think it's, I think it's just very lovely, very, very pretty. I knit these on 3.25 millimeter needles and I did my, my typical recipe, a 15 row two by two ribbed cuff and a 35 row leg. So in total, we're looking at 50 rows here. A very typical slip stitch, heel flap, and then a gusset. And then I knit the foot, which was, I think, also about 35 rounds. And then the toe decreases, which I did a little more rounded than I normally would. And I'm starting to understand why people get nervous when they gift knit socks for other people. I am really hoping, like, this looks kind of tiny. Um, but I think that with some blocking and once it's on the foot, it'll be a good fit. So I'm really excited to be working on these. If you haven't knit DK weight socks, I am here to tell you that you need to. Like, they go so fast. They're so satisfying to work on. If you're looking to get rid of some mohair, or not get rid of, but if you're looking to use some mohair, this is a just a great way to do it. They make excellent house socks, adding mohair to what might be a less durable yarn um, or a sock yarn without nylon is also going to add a lot of durability to your socks. So I think, I think they're just beautiful and very, very fuzzy. So this is the first sock I'm working on for one of my friends. And rather than casting on her second sock right away, I cast on the sock for her boyfriend, which, I mean, they're both are really good friends. Mine and Adam's really good friends. So I cast on the socks for my other friend. And these are the spicy dill socks that I was talking about. So the two yarns I'm using are, um, the mohair is Gepard Garn Kidsetta in this like really apple -y, juicy green kind of color. And then the sock yarn is another four ply merino nylon sock yarn. This one was gifted to me from Hobby as well. And this is their unicorn sock yarn, the hand dyed version. And so it's primarily green. It's got blue, it's got yellow, it's got these red speckles. It's a very fun sock yarn. And I think that this pair of socks is going to come out really, really nice as well. For the most part, my plan with this is to follow pretty much the same recipe, even including stitch counts, until I get to the heel. And so I can't really give credit on this. I can't remember who I saw talking about this. But my understanding is that one of the main areas where knitting socks for more masculine bodies can be not necessarily a challenge, but a fit consideration that needs to be made is that the actual ankle where, you know, the leg sort of transitions into the foot, if that makes sense, um, can be a lot wider than it might be on more feminine bodies. And so what my plan is, is when I get to the heel flap, I'm going to extend the heel flap by about a centimeter. I suspect that'll mean knitting four extra rows, like a wrong side and a right side row twice, and then picking up more stitches for the gusset and then maybe decreasing all of those out. I might not decrease them out completely because um, the person that these socks are for has slimmer ankles, but I think he said he has a size 11 foot. So I would want it to be snug around both the foot and the ankle, more or less. I mean, if they're a little loose, 
I'd rather they be a little loose than that they can't get them on. So that is my plan to adjust for fit on this sock. Um, one other thing I will say about knitting these DK weight socks is if you know your sock recipe pretty well, these are really, really good on the go knitting, especially if you're knitting Magic Loop, because then you don't really even need any stitch markers. You can distribute all of your stitches so that anywhere you would need to do significant shaping, like shaping a gusset, those transitions can be placed at the change in your cable. So I think that these have been really good for me, specifically because I can take them on on the train and on the bus. And in the winter time when I'm like bundled up in a coat and I have a lot of other things on me that I need for work, um, it's even more important I find to have smaller projects with me, which is kind of counterintuitive. I had thought that, you know, in the summer, that's when I wouldn't really want big projects with me because then you're just holding a lot more wool in your lap, which could probably just be a bit of a nuisance. But I sort of have realized after knitting on public transit for several seasons now, um, is that in the winter, because I actually just have a lot more stuff on my person due to wearing a coat, that smaller projects in the winter and bigger projects in the summer actually appear to be a little more manageable. So those are the gift knitting socks that I'm currently working on for, for no reason other than I just want to knit my friends some socks. However, today I also did cast on a, another small little project for when I'm not feeling like knitting socks. And here it is. It is the beginnings of another itty bitty Sophie scarf by Petite Knit. This one I am knitting up in some leftovers. This is my Magpie Fibers Swanky Sock in the colorway Voices Carry, which is one of the most stunning sock yarns I have ever laid my eyes on. This was my 24th birthday present to myself and I knit an easy headband by Sari Nordland with this. And you may know that I was working on a Stripes by Andrea Mowry that included this yarn as well as some of my other green and brownie neutral colored leftovers. Um, and I'll talk more about my my yarn changes in stash this month but I ended up frogging that stripes because I have two pairs of three millimeter needles. I have these ones by Chow Gu which is a really long red lace fixed circular three millimeter needle. And then I have a 32 inch pair of Lika three millimeter needles, which are a laminated wood. And so I was originally working on my wooden needles and then I had so much circumference that I needed to switch to my larger needles. But as many of you probably know, and if you don't know, I will explain, when you knit on wooden needles, because the fiber and the wooden needle can grip each other better, you tend to knit at a slightly looser gauge or significantly looser gauge than when you're knitting on metal needles where your yarn is a little more free to slide around. And so when I switched from my wooden needles to my metal needles, because I was knitting it at a fingering weight gauge, and I was fudging with the stitch counts and all of these things, I just had a really significant change in gauge. And I was ending up with these rows that had abnormally elongated stitches. I was forgetting to do jogless stripes when I was changing my colors. And I also just kind of realized that I'm not particularly interested in wearing stripes. So, or at least not, <clears throat> excuse me, or at least not horizontal stripes. I've been liking wearing horizontal, uh, vertical stripes, like button downs with vertical stripes, but nothing against the pattern. I just have been working on other things and realized that 
it's not something I'm interested in going back to. So I frogged that and that is why I am able to now put this yarn into something else. And I think that this little Sophie scarf is a good way to use this yarn because it will be a small and simple way to just really appreciate how beautiful this particular yarn is. I should have enough. This is about half a hundred gram skein. Um, I haven't weighed it recently, so I can't remember precisely how much it is, but I do think I'll be able to get the large size, uh, or I hope I'll be able to get the large size of the Sophie scarf out of what I have. And then whatever remains, I can just put into my excavation blanket. So a little itty bitty beginnings of a Sophie scarf in a very beautiful yarn. If you don't know, the Magpie Fibers Swanky Sock has cashmere in it, um, which is another reason why I think this will be something lovely to have more around the neck area. And now we come to my largest of my works in progress. I have finished the body on my Traveler's Cardigan by Ozetta. So here it is. Ta-da! Ta-da! It is so exciting. I'm going to try it on for you. Whew. I find mohair hats quite itchy. Actually, I should just stop knitting hats with mohair. All right, here we go. So my Traveler's Cardigan by Ozetta. This is where we're at at the moment. It definitely needs a block, but for reference, here is my belly button. So I think once this is blocked, I'm going to have a nice cropped fit that I'm going to enjoy a lot. Now, this cardigan pattern is knit up at an Aran weight gauge, but I am using a yarn that is making me work off gauge. So this yarn is Noro Madara, and this is in the colorway Sake. If you have not seen this yarn before, it is absolutely exquisite. It is 60% wool, 30% silk, 10% alpaca, if I'm remembering the distribution of the fibers or the composition of the fibers correctly. And this yarn is a single ply, but all of the various colors are sort of spun directly into the yarn. It is very, very beautiful. I purchased five skeins of this from Yarnit, which is a uh, local yarn store in Coburg, Ontario. And this yarn has been an absolute dream to work with. It feels both rustic and really soft at the same time. I love the thick and thinness of the yarn as well. And that texture is also really coming through in the fabric. So you can see all of the colors are just emerging beautifully in this fabric. It's not as, um, it's not as much color play as some other Noro yarns I've seen shared before, but this is, this is just enough for me. Now, I think that blocking, especially with the alpaca and the silk, is going to even out and open up this fabric a lot. Right now I think the fit is kind of like like a cute almost like a bomber jacket style shape um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how how all of this lays once it's blocked. So as I mentioned the pattern is knit at an Aran weight gauge. I think the needles called for are six millimeters but for the body I am working with 4.5 millimeter needles and for the button band which you can see is already done I was working with 3.75 millimeter needles. Now the button band on this cardigan is knit at the same time as the body so I did use a pair of wooden DPNs and I was also using wooden needles for the rest of the knitting and Although it was slightly fiddly at times, especially to get started, 
because I was using wooden needles, I didn't have any issues with stitches slipping all over the place. Um, and I'm really happy that I don't have to go back now to knit a button band. For the collar, which you can see here, I have used also 3.75 millimeter needles and I did do a sewn bind off, which I think has turned out very well. Again, it'll be improved with blocking. One thing I will say though, if you do choose to use a thick and thin yarn for a project like this, you kind of need to accept the fact that if a really slubby area ends up like right at an edge, that might be something noticeable. And if that is going to be overwhelmingly bothersome for you, maybe take it into consideration. In this case, um, kind of unavoidable because of the button band being knit at the same time as the body. But I suppose you would also have the option of just binding off in a different yarn if you really, really wanted to. But anyway, I digress too much. Because I am knitting this at a smaller gauge, I went up in size. And a lot of the times when I've seen people talking about how they do their, their maths when they're playing around with gauge, a lot of the times what people will say is um, they calculated like how many stitches they would need with their gauge in order to get the intended size that they want. I, I always get, it's not that I get confused when I listen to people explain this. For me, I just find, I mean, and that math very well may be proportional reasoning, but the way I did my proportional reasoning was a little bit different. I knit my gauge swatch and my gauge swatch was about 17 stitches per four inches. And this is knit at 15 stitches per four inches. So what I did was essentially like a cross multiplication and division kind of situation. Um, I did 15 divided by 17, which is about 0.88, I think. Let me, let me just do this math on my laptop. Um, 15 divided by 17. Yeah, so 15 divided by 17, it's about 0.88. So 15 divided by 17 is equal to, um, no, <laughs> we're getting there. 15 divided by 17 gave me 0.88 and change. And then what I did was I looked at the finished circumference of the size large, which is a size up from what I would typically choose to knit for myself if I was working at gauge. And I thought to myself, okay, there's this, my gauge is going to give me something that is 88% the size of whatever this pattern is telling me. So what is 88% of the size large? And is that going to fall within the ease range that I am interested in? And so that worked out for me because then I didn't have to play with stitch counts or anything like that. I could just pick a different size and things should for the most part work out. Because this is a drop shoulder cardigan, it's kind of a boxy fit. It's a bit of a cropped fit. There aren't any specific design features where I felt like row gauge was going to be too significant of a worry for me. So that was how I went about picking my sizing. And if you're interested in knowing what my personal measurements are, that information will be in the description box below. And if for whatever reason I forget to put that in the description box below and it's information you would like to know, um, please do just like remind me and I'll try to add that in as soon as possible. Um, so, so yeah, that's where we're at with, with this cardigan. I am really, really looking forward to this. As you can see, I just have the sleeves left to go and I think that if anything the sleeves here are where there might be a noticeable difference in changing 
sizes just because of how extensive the drop shoulder actually ends up being but again give you another look at it again here's my belly button I think I think this is gonna be a really cool super easy to wear cardigan and I think that I'm going to really enjoy the cropped length other than um sleeveless tops I haven't really knit anything intentionally to be cropped but I think for a cardigan that'll sort of enhance its versatility in terms of being able to wear it with um dresses and skirts for providing me with some waist definition so I'm going to keep this on for the rest of the video because there's not really much more to talk about I think Oh, one thing I will say, if I have any of this left over, I'm probably going to make a hair accessory with it. Maybe a headband. I think that'd be a really nice, comfy, easy headband with the alpaca and the silk. So, yeah, I'm not even done the third skein of this yet. I have two full skeins and then some left over. And because this is a dropped shoulder, I don't think I'll, I don't know that I'll need a full skein per sleeve. So we'll see what happens with leftovers with this. All right, and the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video is an update on my yarn stash tracking for this year. So if you have seen my knitting intentions video for 2023, I talked about how I want to keep track of my yarn stash this year. I've seen a lot of folks talk about wanting to knit a certain weight of yarn and I've seen folks talk about wanting to knit specific distances or lengths of yarns so like 10,000 yards for example. Um, for me I think the easiest and most straightforward way to go about doing it this year is just by units of yarn so like one skein of yarn is one unit, one 50 gram ball of yarn is also one unit, one 25 gram ball of mohair is one unit, um, just because it's a quick way to count and, you know, yeah, just because it's a quick way to count, pretty straightforward. So I started 2023 with 77 units of yarn in my stash. In January, I added 13 units of yarn. That includes the five skeins of Noro Madara that I purchased for this cardigan, as well as um, several skeins of yarn that was gifted from Arcane Fiberworks. And I re-added the balls of yarn that I had previously subtracted for my stripes by Andrea Mowry because that's frogged that yarn has essentially returned to stash and so although previously I had counted it out as like in use or being used um I've, I've added it back in as like having potential for for its own projects so that was the yarn that I added 13 units I decluttered 12 units of yarn I had gone through what I had and looked at what I was pretty confident I would use this year and what I was pretty confident I wouldn't use this year um, and decided that some of the yarns could be better used in another fiber artist's or knitter's hands. So we have um, a little knitting group chat at my school in addition to the knitting club that I staff supervise. So. I kind of just said, hey, I'm coming in with this bag of yarn. Um, Y'all are welcome to like come check out what I have and take whatever you'd like. So I was able to declutter 12 units of yarn by doing that, um, which, which felt nice for like having the clear mental and physical space, but also just nice to make some of my colleagues happy. And then in terms of the yarn I used, this is where y'all are welcome to disagree with my methods. Um, I'm gonna say that I used 21 units of yarn. Now hear me out. 
I used the three balls of yarn for my stripes, which had been added back in. I counted out two balls of yarn for my Oslo hat by Petite Knit. I counted out nine balls of yarn for these socks that I knit in collaboration with Hobby Yarn, because as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five colors. And then in addition to the wool for each of these colors, I used four different balls of mohair. So I said nine for that. I used two balls of yarn of Sandiscarn Alpaca for that Sophie scarf that I showed you earlier. My dog ate a ball of yarn. <laughs> didn't eat it, but she tore it up and it's not really usable. Um, I have used so far nearly three skeins of Noro Madara for the Traveler's Cardigan. And I have used one skein, I've started at least one skein of yarn for <coughs> that purple sock for my friend that I showed you. I didn't count the mohair in that case because that mohair ball was already half done. But when I move on to the next mohair ball for that pair of socks, I will count it. And then for the green socks I showed you, those being cast on yesterday, February 1st, will go into my February count. Now, the reason why I said you're welcome to disagree with me on how I'm doing this counting is that this is how much of some of the sock yarns I have left from those striped socks. So the reason I've decided to count these out despite having so much left is that I know if I don't get to using these very shortly for some sort of air quotes scrappy project, they can pretty much go straight into my excavation blanket, which I'm reluctant to do at this point in time because these are neutrals. However, you can see that, you know, here's a ball of knitting for olive merino in marzipan, a very neutral color. I also have some like cream and some white sock yarn. I have other neutral yarns that have yet to be used. So I think that my blanket could actually use a little bit more neutral coloring so these may very well just be going straight into the blanket in which case um, I'm not counting all of my scraps that are going into my excavation blanket as being sort of air quotes in stash. That being said I can't remember when I last showed this but I'll always flash it because I think it's so fun. Here is where we're at with my excavation blanket. I am two months ahead of my goal. This was the start of January and my goal is 10 rows per month or 10 colors per month. So, you know, plugging away with this, having a lot of fun, this really bright band <laughs> needs to sort of be balanced out at the moment, but I think it's eclectic. I think it's cozy. I think the neutral yarns will be very helpful for, you know, breaking up these big and bright bands. So that's my rationale with that. Now, if it's a yarn like the Noro Madara that might not necessarily make it into the blanket because of its weight or its fiber properties, then I'll figure it out on like an as needed basis but really I am trying to give as much love to all my yarns this year as possible. I'm not counting or tracking in this way because I necessarily want to like knit my stash down completely. I do want to have a net negative stash by the end of the year and to sort of wrap up with the math, um, 13 units of yarn added 21 units of yarn used, 12 units of yarn decluttered. That's a net change of negative 20 units of yarn. And so starting 2023 with 77 units of yarn, I now have 57 untouched, like have not been used yet, units of yarn. And so 
I will start anew with my counting for February and I'll update you again when February is over. So yeah, folks, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Whoa. I hope you enjoyed seeing this check-in on my projects. I am really hoping to have this cardigan done next time I sit down to film a podcast, mostly because I really hope to be able to wear this while it's still cold out. It's so cool. I'm so excited. So until I get to see y'all again, I am wishing you health and happy knitting. Bye everyone.